Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the monthly chart of silver. I wanted to show this to you because I wanted to do sort of an inflation adjusted comparison here. So just based on the the silver trend from back in 2003, and that's going to be an important date because we're going to see that on the uh, Panamacrid silver chart. But you can see here, this is the this is the trend line. Um, you know, there's a lot of places you can draw it. It's in around here somewhere. You can see they're taking it lower with this red candlestick, and it's going to be exciting. I showed you on new lows that as far as the junk silver is concerned, and the, even the silver eagles, we're seeing new lows. How low can we go? Well, we're definitely in the area of dispute because all the way back in 2008, we never got uh, eagles below 16 bucks. So it's going to be interesting to watch the premiums. If they try to get new lows, where are they going to, where are they going to put the price? Uh, if they put the price down to 12 bucks, um, where do premiums expand to? And does that cause another mass buying frenzy, which they've already caused in the physical market? Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to watch. I don't really care because I've already made up my mind. I already know that it's one of the most undervalued assets ever to exist in the world, if not the most. So it's just kind of interesting to watch it as it plays out. Now, I wanted to do a comparison here of a chart of Pan American silver. Because this gives us a better idea of what the inflation adjusted price is. Now, what's interesting, the first thing that you want to notice here, you can go back here and I drew it with all data. Fortunately, it comes back to 03, so it's in that area, but you can see we're right around back to that area. We actually get a gigantic M, which is kind of interesting because the technical pattern is uh, M for murder and uh, W for win, which implies it's going lower. Uh, going lower for this company would be bankruptcy, uh, th and that wouldn't surprise me. But uh, so the first thing that you want to notice here that's kind of interesting is that you have this double top. Now, the double top coincides with the Bear Stearns top in silver and the May Massacre in silver. One was in March of 2008, and the other one was in May of 2011. They basically give the same price here on this stock. Now, what's interesting is the price of silver here was 21. The price of silver here was 49. But the price of stock was the same. Uh, was, was the inflation adjusted price, did it change by 100% there? Mm, not that much, but it had some catching up to do. So that's a very interesting piece of information. Now, the other more interesting piece of information is that we're currently trading at a price of 6, whereas both of those tops were around 44. That's implying that silver is down a massive percent uh, and inflation adjusted, uh, the price is wrong by a very, very large number. Um, if silver were to go into new highs, uh, that's going to imply a, a much, much higher price. Um, or you could turn it around and say that silver is threefold undervalued. The price of silver at, at 15 here, uh, if that's going to nearly bankrupt the company lower than it was there, then we're looking at possibly $45 is really the true price of silver. It's hard to say. So the suppression goes on. It's really just kind of like a soap opera that we want to watch to see how it turns out. We know that it's going to turn out really bad for the bankers in the end. And uh, we're going to see some of the desperation of the bankers when we look at uh, this dumb diamond thing. But first, I want to look at this Martin Armstrong thing. Now, Martin Armstrong is getting hammered from all sides. It started with Bill Holter, but there have been a lot of people who've wondered about Martin Armstrong for quite some time. M Martin Armstrong kind of seems like a guy that cut a deal, and he can tell the truth about a lot of things. Now, we've had a lot of discussions about that. You have a lot of people, and it's a large number of people, who can talk about a lot of truth 
and then they have a little bit of lies thrown in there. Uh, the list is very long. It's up to you to decide who you think is in that camp. I'm going to tell you, I'm not in that camp, but it's up to you to decide whether I'm in that camp or not. But certainly, in my opinion, people like Alex Jones and Mark Dice and many, many people, in my opinion, certainly Martin Armstrong, many, many people in the alternative media have made some kind of deal with the powers that be. And they're allowed to say a whole bunch of things that are true, but they have to deny or lie about certain things. Now, it seems here that Bill Holter has, has just caught uh, Martin Armstrong in just a blatant lie, um, and he's changed his opinion on gold. They already pointed out how he's done a complete flip-flop on gold. But this one, where he actually says that gold was devalued in 1934, which is the exact opposite of the truth. It's something that's really hard to understand how somebody could get that wrong. So let's read a little bit of Bill Holter. After writing my last piece regarding Martin Armstrong, I thought that would be enough. It wasn't. A reader replied and forwarded this recent article by Martin Armstrong. Did gold survive the Depression? Please read this short article twice before continuing to my commentary. I had to read this twice myself because the first time through I kept saying, huh? The second time through I could say is what? Okay, let's start with the most ridiculous statement, one patently false in a revision of history. Quote, you are doomed if you cling to the idea that gold will, sim will rise simply because stocks decline. Gold was devalued in 1934 since gold was money. What it could purchase for $20.67 then cost $35. The government confiscated gold and moved to a two-tier monetary system with gold used exclusively for international settlements, not domestic. Now, this is Bill Holder again. Gold was not devalued. It was revalued higher versus the dollar. So, therefore, the dollar was devalued. Another way to say it is the dollar was devalued versus gold. This is fact. He then said what it could purchase for $20.67 then cost $35. Really, Martin? Don't you mean the $20.67 that used to be required to purchase one ounce of gold then cost $35 or 70% more dollars? The crux of the rest of his article is gold is not money. He claims dollars are money. He defines money as money is solely what another will accept because they know someone else will accept it from them. You cannot dictate to the world what you think should be money. He goes on to say they refuse to understand that money is just a unit of account or a medium of exchange that everyone must agree on. Um, no, Martin, you just described currency, not money. You also forgot another minor point. Money must be first and foremost a store of value. Now I'm going to disagree a little bit there. Money is what people value. Um, I mean, if everybody agrees that something is money, it could be seashells. It, it, it's never going to be seashells in a place where you actually have silver and gold. And we don't want to go into all of the, the definitions of money and why money is money, why gold is the best money. But he didn't just describe currency. What he described was fiat currency. And... Uh, the currency that we use that's called money, the dollar, is a fiat currency, and it's not because everyone agrees on it. It's because it's decreed. It's fiat. We have legal tender laws that say you must accept it, and it's the only way you can pay your taxes. So that's not completely clear. But still, Martin Armstrong is caught in just the most blatant lie, and that's, that's kind of strange. Uh, now, even more strange than that, is this outright dumb diamond. I mean, the stupidity of diamond. And he looks really old there, uh, kind of like Janet Yellen. We know he had cancer. Supposedly he's cured, but he comes out with just an outrageous and stupid statement about Bitcoin. Jamie Diamond, virtual currency will be stopped. The JP Morgan CEO explains why he thinks the government will crack down on Bitcoin and other virtual currencies before they get big. Well, Jamie, they're already big. They don't have your fake market cap of your fake companies that are 
supported by the Federal Reserve, but they're growing in market cap and the Chinese are buying them. And it doesn't really matter whether you're buying them because the Chinese are buying them. Jamie Dimon isn't on board with Bitcoin. Speaking on Wednesday at the Fortune Global Forum, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase said that the market for the virtual currency isn't large and it would be stopped by the government before it ever got to that point. Isn't that interesting? This just fascinates me. You have two sides on this Bitcoin debate. You have all the zero hedge type bashers who say Bitcoin's a fraud, Bitcoin's not going to be anything, Bitcoin is fake and it's a Ponzi scheme and it doesn't work and it's all these crazy things. And yet you have people like Jamie Dimon saying that it's not going to succeed because the government will stop it before it does. Which one is it? Does it work or not? Since when does the government have to stop something that doesn't work? Very strange. Diamond said, despite the fact that Bitcoin is getting some lip service in Washington as politicians try to say they support Silicon Valley innovation, he thinks eventually there will be a crackdown. Quote, virtual currency where it's called a Bitcoin versus U.S. dollar, that's going to be stopped, said Diamond. Quote, no government will ever support a virtual currency that goes around borders. Hmm addressing the capital controls, and doesn't have the same controls. It's not going to happen. You sure about that, Jamie? Maybe you're going the way of the dodo bird. Just the same, Diamond and JP Morgan had established a study group to examine the blockchain technology used to record Bitcoin transactions. Quote, blockchain is like any other technology, said Diamond. If it is cheaper, effective, works, and secure, then we're going to use it. Right now, the verdict on blockchain tech is mixed. Diamond said he added that the loan market could be a good candidate for blockchain because there's a lot of paperwork involved and that the line of, in that line of business and transactions can take 20 days to close. So Diamond is saying that Bitcoin would speed up real estate transactions because as far as I know, there isn't a problem in sending money from bank to bank. That's not why it takes so long to close a mortgage. It has to do with all the paperwork and lawyers and inspections and things like that. Does he even know what he's talking about? I don't think so. He has no idea what he's talking about. But he said in other areas of financial markets like trading stocks, the blockchain probably wouldn't offer significant improvement. That said, Diamond made it clear that Bitcoin or any other virtual currency would never be a major competitor to the U.S. dollar. Quote, the technology will be used and it could be used to transport currency, but it will be dollars, not bitcoins. Wow, he seems a little bit defensive there. Now let's think about some of the technologies and jobs that went away because of the internet. Remember how if you wanted to buy something used, you'd look in the classified ads? Yeah, that was wiped out by Craigslist. Remember how real estate agents were the only people who could get you quotes on houses and you had to go through them? That was wiped out by Zillow. How many occupations can we go through and find out how they were completely changed or destroyed by the technology that came along with the internet? It's a long, long list. Are bankers next? I think they are. So let's read this comment. This is actually a lot better than the article itself. This is a comment from Bruce Swanson. He says, apparently without knowing it, Diamond is saying that the Bitcoin append only world shared public ledger will be banned and replaced by another one that does not use a non-counterfeitable crypto token used in the Bitcoin system to reward the network of anonymous workers who maintain the integrity of the Bitcoin ledger. That can gain speculative fiat value in the marketplace as a representative of the future fiat value of that ledger. Such a tokenless replacement ledger would, of course, have to be centralized and yet worldwide too. The UN comes to mind. But the Bitcoin ledger in use today cannot possibly be Ill illegal except by administrative ukazi, subject to constitutional review, 
Such a review would certainly validate the legality of Bitcoin ledger and the necessarily Bitcoins and the right to use and trade them. Note that the feds recently finished auctioning off a wad of Silk Road's Bitcoins to the highest bidder. A Bitcoin fiat value does not make it a currency and there is no constitutional way Bitcoins can be banned in the United States and no way to enforce such a ban around the world, which is what would be required to make any local regional ban effective. One gets the somewhat unsettling feeling that Diamond does not know that the Bitcoin system is even a ledger, although he does state that Bitcoins may be a dirt cheap way to transfer controlled currencies such as the dollar. He's right about that. He just doesn't know how or why, apparently. On the subject of Bitcoin, panels of suited and establishmentarian talking heads and their journalist interlocutors in the audience usually don't. So that is dumb diamond. Is he really that dumb? I don't know. It's hard for me to believe that he could be that dumb. But I've also spent a large amount of time in the corporate culture of America. And uh, the description I use is the air gets thin as you rise up there. And I've dealt with a number of directors, VPs, and even COOs that are really, really dumb people. And I've talked to a lot of lawyers and doctors in the technology field. And they're also really, really dumb people when it comes to common sense. So it wouldn't surprise me if Diamond just doesn't understand Bitcoin at all. Of course, he is a dinosaur and he's going the way of the dodo bird. So back to the silver chart. If silver were inflation adjusted based on the miners like PAAS, we should already be trading at that $45 handle. Uh, The price of silver right now is making it... uh, basically a guarantee of bankruptcy if you're mining it. Um, We're back to 2003 prices. And of course, 2003 was the beginning of this very, very long bull market. So you should consider this the most incredible gift. Uh, A lot of people have gotten into the Bitcoin space lately. I personally have not been buying since there's been a run up. Although I am buying on the dips, I I did convert a lot of my cryptos to Litecoin because Litecoin, uh, we'll go ahead and pull up the chart here. Litecoin took a huge dip in uh, the Chinese yuan, which ultimately bled over into the uh, U.S. dollar. So last night when I saw Litecoin trading around three bucks, I took a large amount of Bitcoin and other currencies that I had left, converted them over into Litecoin. And uh, I'm sitting in Litecoin because I don't believe that this smackdown is going to last in Litecoin. I actually do believe that Litecoin is going to surpass the old high of $48 a coin. Again, at that time, we were talking about a Bitcoin price of $1,200. So we were talking about a, well, you do the math, um, uh, 20 something ratio to one. I think we're going to actually return there and go higher. So Litecoin is a really, really cheap coin. Uh, the amount of Litecoin available is four times the number of Bitcoin, or I believe Bitcoin is 21 million total coins by the end of the run. And Litecoin is around 84 million coins. So if both coins perform the same function, operated equally as well and valued were valued uh, as well uh, the ratio on those coins is four to one that means if bitcoin goes into uh, ties its old high at 1200 if litecoin were valued equally as bitcoin that would give us a litecoin price of 300 dollars a litecoin so for me litecoin is kind of like the bitcoin silver it really performs the same functions And then there's a whole lot of other coins. And there's a lot of coins coming out now that are trying to build in anonymity. And uh, so this technology is going forward. uh, But we have JP Dinosaur Diamond here telling us that none of this is going to succeed. Of course, he's going to go the way of the dodo bird and uh, Bitcoin and uh, silver, which he's been suppressing. And all the true stores of value are going to live on. And uh, his kind are going to go away. And we'll talk to you next time.